Global Positioning System, GPS. I want to highlight a few programs and we'll move on to some questions here. GPS. Colorado's the epicenter for the world of GPS. 19, there's, let me back up, 39 satellites today in orbit in the GPS constellation. 19 of those were manufactured in Colorado. All of them were launched by United Launch Alliance, right, headquartered right here in Colorado. Every single one of them. And every satellite is controlled at Schriever Air Force Base, right outside of Colorado Springs. And the U.S. government provides GPS free to the world. Clinton administration in 1995 said, this isn't just going to be DOD only. We're going to open it up and provide it free to the world. And I can remember flying at the time, and I'm going, and uh, I used to hack a watch, time distance heading, and then an inertial system that kind of drifted every so often when we started flying with GPS, especially in a fighter when you're the only, you don't have, it's you. It's you navigating, doing everything. You're going, wow, why are we providing this capability free to the world? But what tremendous foresight. Any economist would can say what the U.S. has gained by providing this capability is immeasurable to the economic impact that we have gained out of GPS. It's it's embedded throughout all our lives and what we do. It synchronizes the global information system. The timing signal that's accurate to a billionth of a second, atomic clock accuracy, provided by the GPS system, synchronizes um, our economic, our information system to enable all financial transactions. If you go to an ATM and get money out of an ATM, that synchronization signal provided by GPS system to enable that financial transaction. If that signal lapsed for more than five or six hours, the scientists have told me Wall Street would crash if it wasn't synchronized to enable these financial transactions. And even tonight, I had my GPS on my phone. Even though I kind of knew where this facility was, I wasn't quite sure, but it told me exactly where it was right here navigating. And so when I was uh, on a recent visit through, uh, I was in the GPS control center at Schriever, and I'm expecting the DV brief, and there's two captains sitting at the console, big screen, watching 24 operational GPS satellites, six in the reserve, others orbiting uh, as spares in the system. Um, so I'm expecting the brief, and the captain turns around and just tells me, well, sir, we control humanity. I go, whoa. Pretty bold statement, Captain. And uh, he goes, well, first there was fire, then the wheel, and now GPS. <laughs> and so I started thinking about it. Okay. Uh, it was later explained to me that there's three billion devices receiving a GPS signal at any one time in the world. That's 7 billion people in the world and 3 billion devices. Started thinking about it. Well, on me, I've got two cell phones, each receiving a signal. My watch receives a, tells me it has a GPS signal. You know, just on me, I have three signals I'm receiving. So I guess, wow, okay, I can believe that. 3 billion devices receiving this GPS signal. Okay, we control humanity. Right here in Colorado. I agree. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's, it's phenomenal capability. Another system, the Orion, it's our next big leap into space, developed right here by Lockheed Martin, the Orion space capsule. I had its first test launch nearly a year ago. It's only a four-hour flight, uh, but successful. But it's enabling our capability to get human-certified uh, space vehicles back into, back into not only orbit, but back into deep space exploration, stepping stone to someday, if our nation sets it as a goal, to get to Mars. And that Orion space capsule developed right here in Colorado, Lockheed Martin, 120 subcontractors on the program right here in Colorado. The uh, test launch was launched by United Launch Alliance on a Delta IV heavy rocket, 2 million pounds of thrust, and I got to go to the launch. And to talk to many media do many media interviews talking about aerospace in Colorado and how we are at the epicenter of human-rated uh, space vehicles getting us back into space. Now, people say, well, we're in space. We're in an international space station. We've got people going there all the time. But we pay the Russian government $76 million an astronaut. 
to get us to the International Space Station because we don't have the capability as a nation to fly our own astronauts to the space station. Now, we're developing that capability in a separate program, but we don't have that capability today. So what happened here? Maybe we weren't so aerospace-minded. Of course, we, we canceled a, a program that was going to fill that gap from the space shuttle to where we are today, but we don't have that capability, and we need to get back on that capability. Um, one other program I'm going to highlight. I'll just highlight the United Launch Alliance. Um, 2006 formed between Lockheed and Boeing, joint venture. Um, right here headquartered in Centennial, 100 consecutive successful launches into orbit. On 2 October with a, a Mexican government satellite. Um, now the significance of that, it was a their heavy a Department of Defense provider, U.S. government provider and launch capability. But this was another government, a commercial launch with a uh, uh, telecommunications satellite for the Mexican government. Now this was Morelos 2 satellite. Morelos 1 was unsuccessfully launched by the Russians. Didn't make it into orbit. So it went back to the U.S. government and ULA put it into orbit on a years later here on a Morelos 2 satellite. Um, governor did a proclamation uh, he called the ULA Day in Colorado for this 100 uh, successful consecutive launch. And uh, I couldn't be more proud in supporting United Launch Alliance. Oh, by the way, I was at the Capitol earlier today with the United uh, Launch Alliance made an announcement um, that, and it was a media event with the governor and so forth there, that they are now starting in year 2017. I was talking about CubeSat technology, shoebox size satellites, that they are going to be on their available space on launches because there's a lot of excess space. When you launch a satellite into orbit, a single payload, there's excess space. And you can launch, they're going to launch up to 25 CubeSats with the excess space there, free to researchers and universities uh, with preference to Colorado University. And in fact, uh, Chancellor was sitting in the front row seat, and, and uh, Tori Bruno, CEO at ULA, points out and says, and CU is going to be the number one first dibs in our launches and, and their CubeSat technology they're developing. So uh, couldn't be more proud of what ULA is doing to promote our business environment. 